I love Netflix. Oh, I love Netflix. Chief reason of all, they brought Blockbuster to its knees. <laughs> Rot in hell, Blockbuster. Rot in hell. Rot in hell, Blockbuster. With your outrageous late fees, your surly sales staff, and your criminally loose definition of new releases. <laughs> Why is this a new release? Because it's in color? It's Braveheart, goddammit. I didn't even know Mel Gibson hated Jews when this movie came out. <laughs> Hate Blockbuster. Love to see a Blockbuster that went out of business. It, make, it warms my heart. I drive by. You can always tell which store used to be a Blockbuster because it's empty and they've taken the sign down, but it still spells out Blockbuster in filth. <laughs> they didn't save enough money to power wash the grime that was behind the sign, so it still says, and it's so appropriate. Ugh, rotten hell. First of all, how did they go out of business with my $60,000 in late fees? <laughs> Would you gamble it away? I hate them. I hate them. Oh, I can remember bringing in a movie and, and just being like so embarrassed. Like, I, you know, I was like, ah, oh, it's been a while. What do I owe you? And the, the little jerk, it was like, uh, oh no, that's all set. It's like, really? Yeah, keep it. <laughs> Is there some sort of amnesty declared or something like that? I, I, you want me to keep this? Oh, yeah, yeah, we already charged $88 to your <laughs> visa. You own New Jack City for the rest of your life. <laughs> Yeah. A movie that you couldn't bring yourself to watch in six weeks. Every time you move, you're going to have to pack up, and that'll be a reminder as to what an irresponsible loser you are. Yeah. You own New Jack City on VHS for the rest of your life. Ugh. I feel that Netflix is... I feel that it was the red envelope that is Netflix that brought Blockbuster to its knees. Netflix I love. But only instant. I don't really want the discs in the envelope anymore. I don't, I don't want to, you know what I mean, I don't want to go all the way to the mailbox, <laughs> open up an envelope, take a, take a disc out of the sleeve, open up my DVD player, put the disc in there, change the source on the TV. <laughs> what am I, a migrant farm worker? <laughs> I, I didn't come here to pick peaches, I just want to watch Total Recall. My goodness, I love Netflix. Although it is, it does cause me a great deal of anxiety because I feel like I should always be watching movies. Because the more movies you watch, the less it costs per movie. There's like that buffet mentality. You know how when you go to a buffet, you figure out how much it costs and then you're like, all right, all right, I'm not losing to the buffet this time. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna beat the buffet. Because the more movies you watch, the less money it costs per movie. So in this economy, if you're not watching a movie, you're losing money. I have like 236 movies on my, on my queue, and I feel like I should always be watching movies. Like if I wake up in the middle of the night and I don't fall directly back to sleep, I'm like, oh, what, I've been up for an hour and a half. I could have I watched Toy Story 3 by now. This is, this, in this economy, it is a sin to not be watching a movie when you have Netflix. And, and I just keep adding more and more movies, and I don't watch enough of them, because so many of them are, are uh, depressing documentaries. And that's my fault, because I gave Food Inc. five stars. <laughs> and it deserved all five of those stars, but it's a very depressing documentary. And now Netflix recommends similar documentaries. Like, Netflix feels that my genre is animal cruelty. For instance, I've had one movie in my queue for 14 months now. It's called The Cove. Exactly. That's the exact reaction to even hearing the name of this movie. Because if you don't know, it's about dolphin slaughter. Yeah, I haven't seen it yet either, but it sounds, it sounds hysterical. <laughs> dolphin slaughter? I am unequivocally more understanding of manslaughter. <laughs> right? There could be a situation where the guy had it coming. <laughs> he was talking shit. 
But a dolphin cannot talk shit. A dolphin can't frown. A dolphin can only give you the most beautiful, sweet smile. And he's being slaughtered. All a dolphin wants to do is jump through hoops, defuse torpedoes, and rescue fatigued swimmers. And they're slaughtering them. And Netflix feels this is the ideal recommendation. It's a top picks for Gary. I'm, I'm Gary. <laughs> Netflix recommends The Cove. Oh, thanks. Yeah, we think you'll like The Cove based on your interest in Hotel Rwanda and Flipper. <laughs> you like Schindler's List and Finding Nemo. Free Willy and the Killing Fields. The Cove is right up your alley. I think you're really going to enjoy The Cove. Netflix, are you kidding me? Six Fridays ago. <laughs> when I tell you what happened, you'll be like, oh yeah, I'd commemorate that every Friday. I found a $20 bill in an old coat. A, a 20. A 20. <sighs> Made my weekend. My plans changed. But what a feeling. Oh my gosh. Like I said, my plans changed. Now, not drastically. Not drastically. I still went to Chipotle Mexican Grill, which, which is my Friday night ritual. It's where I welcome the Sabbath. But here's how it changed. I brought my best friend, paid for him. Baller. And to answer your follow-up question, yeah, we both got guacamole. <laughs> Unprecedented. Unprecedented. I never get the guacamole. I, I've ordered it, but then when she says guacamole is $2 extra, I immediately start backtracking. I'm like, yeah, you're right. I, I was being impetuous. I don't know what I was thinking. I, I got caught up in the moment. There's no reason for me to get, not, no, I'll just, thank you. Thank you very much. You're absolutely right. Can we never mention this again? And then, and then she says, mention what? And we share a laugh. <laughs> There's also part of you that thinks, what am I wearing that she thinks I can't cover the guac? <laughs> what kind of vibe am I giving off? Am I? She doesn't mean to be condescending. But isn't it implicitly condescending for somebody to look at you and decide that $2 might be a deal breaker? <laughs> Guacamole is $2 extra. Do you want to, uh, do you want to call your bank, maybe? <laughs> you want to check your balance because guacamole is $2 extra. By law, they have to, by Mexican food law, they have to tell you <laughs> that guacamole is $2 extra. It's part of the... The Condiment Surcharge Disclosure Act of 2007. <laughs> where they have to tell you guacamole is $2 extra. And usually, I don't get it. But because I found a 20, she told me it was $2 extra, I didn't bat an eyelash. I had walked in there with such a vibe, like I was giving off, like, like a, the confidence bordering on arrogance, like almost... Uh, not arrogant, but on the, on the cusp of arrogance. And I looked at her, she says, it's $2 extra. I looked at her as if to say, yeah, why don't you let me worry about my finances? <laughs> why don't you just grab a melon baller and start scooping guacamole into a ridiculously small container? <laughs> why don't you let Gary Goleman worry about Gary Goleman? <laughs> I'm Gary Goleman. <laughs> well, no, it's been a minute. It's been a few minutes since he introduced me. I thought I'd reacquaint you with our hero. So, I just said so we're all on the same page. <laughs> Bill Gates will never have that feeling. The found 20, it means nothing to him. Nothing. A 20 is more annoying to Bill Gates than a nickel is to us. Exponentially more annoying. And how annoying is a nickel to us? It is, I hate them. I hate them because 
they're quarter impersonators. <laughs> they sit in your pocket and they do this, they do a great quarter. They're just like, <laughs> you reach in there and you're like, oh, I, I got a, I got a, I got a, I got a nickel. Son of a bitch, nickel, you, you, you got me again, you do a, I gotta give it to you, do a great quarter. Do, do you do Christopher Walken? <laughs> I won't charge you for that one. That was... <laughs> but you don't have change for the meter or for the laundry or for the, for the Mike and Ikes at the front of the grocery store. You know what I'm talking about? The Mike and Ikes from the front of the grocery store? This is interesting. <laughs> they sell candy at the front of the grocery store in gumball machines, okay? Those nasty, nasty gumball machines. They probably haven't rotated the stock in 35 years. <laughs> they sell the same candy inside the grocery store, in a box, <laughs> hermetically sealed, free of all disease, <laughs> fresher, and at a lower unit price <laughs> than the candy at the front of the store. But schmuck that I am, if I have a quarter and they have candy out there, I'm like, no, 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 forget about you, freshness. I want, I want my Mike and Ikes to tumble down a spout, a disgusting, filthy spout that a dozen six-year-olds have shoved their measle-covered hands, their hepatitis C-encrusted fingernails, trying to scrape free Mike's and or Ikes off the side, yes. Yes. If I'm going to eat Mike and Ike's, I want to eat my Mike and Ike's the same way a petting zoo llama would eat his Mike and Ike's. <laughs> Let's talk about how wealthy Bill Gates is for a little while, because I've become, I've become obsessed with this man. It's just, I used to think Donald Trump was the richest man in America. And it's, he's not even close to the richest man in America. Bill Gates is the richest man in America, and it's a blowout. He, he is worth $59 billion. $59 billion. He makes everybody in here look destitute. And I know, even if you're like, no, I'm, it's okay, I'm a billionaire. No, fuck you, you are broke compared to Bill Gates. He, we have nothing in common with him. He has nothing in common with your, your run-of-the-mill garden variety, single-digit billionaires. <laughs> like, most of your billionaires, let's be honest, are, have one billion dollars. <laughs> They're what I like to call barely billionaires. <laughs> Whenever I'm introduced to a billionaire as a billionaire, and it turns out they've only got one billion dollars, I always say under my breath, barely. <laughs> And most of, the, most of the people who are given credit for billionaires are technical billionaires. They're rounded billionaires. They're worth like 978 million, 988 million. They're just rounded up to be billionaires. And they know they're failures. <laughs> they'll, they'll correct you. They know. I really thought Donald Trump was the richest billionaire. No. He doesn't have $59 billion and neither will you. <laughs> Unless, this is what you would have to do, other than working really hard and inventing something that takes over the world. <laughs> the other way to do it is, of course, to win the lottery. You would have to win a $100 million Mega Millions jackpot every week for 600 consecutive weeks. <laughs> but I'm going to warn you, that type of streak, very rare. <laughs> Almost unheard of, it's very... But that's what that man is worth, $59 billion. And, and Donald Trump, on the other hand, he's worth, this is great, $2.9 billion. <laughs> What a loser. What a loser. $2.9 billion. That's less than five. 
you round down less than five. Essentially, he's worth, in my calculations, he's worth zero billion dollars. He's worth zero billion dollars. And yet he's, well, you're, you're fired, you're fired. You're broke. Shame on you, you should be embarrassed. Walking around humiliated all the time because you can't tell me he's not competitive. He's gotta be. He's, these people have to be maniacally, mentally ill, competitive. They have to be in order for me to cope with their success. They have to be. <laughs> Other, otherwise, then they're, if they're regular people, then it's gonna kill me. That'll, that, that will destroy me. I have to be convinced that they're mentally ill. But I think Donald Trump, there's no question, this man is maniacally competitive and it kills him that Bill Gates is beating him 59 to three. It kills him. <laughs> it kills him that he's losing by eight touchdowns. 59 to three, Bill Gates. He can, he can condescend to Donald Trump. That's, the, that's gotta be the best part of being Bill Gates, is talking down to Donald Trump. <laughs> Sees him at a party, goes up to him. Hey, what's up, Trump? <laughs> Just looks at him with that disdain that nobody else really can, what's up, Trump? <laughs> you sickened me. <laughs> You're so tacky. You're so gauche. I made $59 billion. <laughs> and I call my business Microsoft. I don't call it Gatesware. <laughs> you egomaniac. You put your, put your name on everything. Trump on everything. It's not underwear. You're not going off to summer camp. Stop it. <laughs> Just put him in his place. What's up, tr what's up, Trump? Calling somebody by their last name after a certain age. It's humiliating. What's up, Trump? I heard you're up to $59 billion. Oh no, that's me but I'm sure you knew that. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding with you. Listen, Trump, $2.9 billion is a good start. Seriously, <laughs> seriously. It's almost three. And I'm gonna tell you something. I think it's adorable. I think it's so quaint that you still keep track of the points. 2.9, mm. that's a, and listen, I'm sure it's a lot of money to you, a hundred million dollars, it's a great deal of money to you. I mean, to me, it's my fast cash setting at the ATM, but for you, <laughs> it's, it's my walk around money, but for you, it's a significant chunk of change. Good for you, hang in there, man, keep swinging. You never know what's gonna happen. Seriously, some of my best times when I only had a couple of billion dollars. There was, a, there, there was something about that fear, that doubt, that not knowing where my next half a billion dollars was coming from that, that just made me feel so alive. <laughs> Rocky is a great one. I, I could watch Rocky every day. It's a great movie, it still holds up. You watch it differently as an adult than you did when you were a kid. When you're a kid, at least when I was a kid, my favorite scene was when he drank raw eggs puts five raw eggs in there, yolks and all, chugs them. And I used to go crazy, I'd be like, oh my God. That's how he's gonna beat him. That's his spinach, that's his secret, <laughs> secret weapon. And I watched it recently and I said out loud by myself, that's not good for you at all. <laughs> Cholesterol, salmonella. You're better off with an egg white omelet. I gotta be honest with you, Rock, maybe. Hear me out, slice up some shallots, throw in some part skim, low moisture mozzarella cheese, maybe an avocado if you got one. Sure, there's a lot of fat in an avocado, but it's the good fat. <laughs> and if you got one, slice it up because they're only ripe for six minutes. <laughs> and then there's, uh, I hadn't seen the Karate Kid in 25 years. People are laughing at my pronunciation, but I'm actually, I'm actually right, and you're wrong. Uh, 
My sensei pronounced it karate. And he was from the Isle of Okinawa, so. I'll be pronouncing it karate for the next couple of minutes. The Karate Kid is on demand this month, and uh, Monday night, I demanded it. <laughs> I wanted it on Sunday. Monday, I demanded it. It's like, one moment, please. What, what are you doing, rewinding it? How can it be even one moment? You have it, don't you? The Karate Kid. You know what I forgot about the Karate Kid? Because I hadn't, I hadn't seen the Karate Kid in 25 years. I hadn't seen it when it came out in the theater. And what I forgot about the Karate Kid is that it sucked. <laughs> I'd forgotten how unwatchable the Karate Kid was. I, I don't remember rooting for the Cobra Kai, but this time around, I was like, ugh, just take him out, seriously. Get him. <laughs> Get him a body bag because he's such a whiny, sniveling little baby who keeps egging them on. He can't leave well enough alone. It's like, beat me up once and I'm gonna, if I go back to school, I'm never gonna go near you again. I'm gonna take a different route to school and I'll transfer if I can. That's how seriously I take that. This kid gets beaten up, goes back, starts taunting them at the Halloween dance. He, he goes into the bathroom and the Cobra Kai are rolling joints dressed as skeletons. Is there any more frightening image? It's the most frightening image in my, in my young, I was like, oh my God, don't go in there. Please don't go in there. Not only don't go in there, he goes in there and he pours hose water on them. They get soaked, they're slipping, and then they beat the crap out of them. It's like, you know, beat me up once, shame on you. Beat me up twice because I pour hose water on you while you're dressing it like skeletons rolling joints. Shame on me. You know, the old saying. <laughs> so I forgot about that. The other thing I forgot is that he won with a crane kick. Uh, spoiler alert. <laughs> he won with a crane kick, which according to his sensei, Mr. Miyagi, I will give credit where credit is due, portrayed magnificently by the late Noriyuki Pat Morita. <laughs> <laughs> Pat, Pat, as we all know, the most common nickname for Noriyuki. <laughs> Remember in first grade when your teacher would get to a Noriyuki during roll call and she would say, Noriyuki, here. Uh, Noriyuki, do you prefer Noriyuki or Pat? <laughs> and he would nudge his friend and be like, is this bitch crazy? Pat! Pat! So according to Pat Morita, the crane kick, and I quote, if do right, no can defend. If do right, no can defend. And I believed that. For 25 years I believed that. But upon a second viewing, <laughs> with the aid of rewind, slow-mo, and pause, well, I found that claim to be not only grammatically incorrect, <laughs> was also karatically incorrect. <laughs> what I assure you is, even if do right, can defend, can defend, indubitably can defend. Hey, it's not easy, I'm not gonna lie to you, but if you're aware of a couple of keys, you can defend the crane kick. Here we go. One, do not sprint face first into the crane kick. That, that is huge. Keep your grill away from his kicking foot. Figure out about how far he can reach with his foot. Draw a line if you have to. Stay behind that. But of course, that begs the question, how do I know that the crane kick is coming? Fair enough. Fortunately, he very subtly telegraphs. <laughs> he 
When you see that, lock in. He's only gonna stand like that for the last half hour of the movie, so you really wanna lock in. And then you can defend the crane kick. And then, how else do I save money? Um, stay in your relationship, that helps. Stay in your relationship. And I, sometimes it's not easy. I mean, I was in a bad relationship. I, I slept on the couch so much. But here's the thing. We're okay with the couch. Women don't know that. We're okay with the couch. I don't know, maybe a hundred years ago, the couch was filled with broken glass <laughs> and upholstered with human hair and burlap. I don't know. I don't know, but they've made quite a bit of headway in sofa technology <laughs> over the years. I mean, it, you wedge yourself into the corner of a good sectional. For tranquility, it's rivaled only by the womb. <laughs> and, and the alternative is to sleep next to an angry woman. <laughs> Go sleep on the couch. Oh, really? I don't get to try to sleep next to the angry, the seething. That's, that's my punishment. I, I can't fight off the vibe of resentment on your side of the bed. You can feel that. You can feel, yes, if you have a posture, tempur and you jump on one side, you can't feel it on the other side. But if somebody is plotting your murder <laughs> on the other side of the bed, you can feel that. That is palpable. Even if by some miracle you're able to fall asleep, she's gonna reignite the argument every 10 minutes, like, like a snooze button of scorn. <laughs> Go sleep on the couch. Oh, not the couch. <laughs> if you're gonna go to the couch, just remember to bring a bed pillow and the old comforter. You don't have to deal with the duvet, it's too heavy, it's like a dentist blanket. And if you, if, you, if you like to lie on your back, put your feet up, you wind up with turf toe. It's not worth it. <laughs> Get the old comforter, the one that's ratty, it's, it's unsightly, but there are always two holes down by the toes that you can stick your big toes through <laughs> and regulate the temperature. <laughs> I'm warm, but I'm cool. The only thing is that my only advice is fight it. When she says go sleep on the couch, fight it so that you don't blow up your spot so, she, <laughs> so that she's comfortable sending you down there for the next argument. She's like, uh, why don't you go sleep on the couch? <gasps> not the couch. <laughs> please, honey, please, not the couch. Please, please don't banish me to the room with the biggest TV in the house, please. <laughs> please, it's too close to the kitchen with all its hot and cold snacks, please. <laughs> No, I have too many DVDs, Netflix, and On Demand. Please don't make me... Please don't make me catch up on the NBA Western Conference playoffs, please. I'm a pretty good, uh, pretty good athlete. I started off my... I love basketball, that's my favorite. I started off my, my basketball career in the very prestigious, very competitive, very cutthroat Jewish Community Center Basketball League. The, the JCC. The JCC was a wonderful microcosm of Jewish thinking because we're a very cautious group, the Jews, which you can understand, we've been in a couple of pickles over the years. <laughs> Generally, lose everything we have every 65 years, and it's been like 67. So if your Jews are on edge, you'll have to understand. <laughs> But this goes beyond caution into the realm of lunacy. The Jewish Community Center Basketball League was a, a league for uh, 12 and under Jewish boys, and they installed collapsible rims on the hoops. <laughs> there wasn't a kid in the league who could grab net, <laughs> and yet the rims were collapsible, which is such Jewish thinking. You never know. You never know. Better safe than sorry, Gary. But you better n no. You never know. Nah. Sometimes you know. There are certain precedents 
as far as smashing backboards. In the history of the NBA, four people have smashed a backboard. Not a single one was a 10-year-old Jew. <laughs> More 10-year-old Jews have played chunk in the Goonies <laughs> than have smashed a backboard playing basketball. You're probably not chunk, but it's more likely you are than you smashed a backboard playing basketball.